Can you hear me okay? Yes, I can. Right. Thank you, Eric. So um, to welcome to Snapshot series for, uh, from HashiCorp. So uh, the, the topic for today is introduction to Sentinel Playground. And before we even talk about what Sentinel Playground is, we have to understand the concept behind Sentinel. And how am I going to illustrate this concept to you? It's going to be via a couple of scenarios. So scenario one, like, let's take a look at a typical infrastructure workflow where imagine you have a developer requesting for a dev VM, which is a very simple example. And uh, usually this wire a ticketing system and this gets flowed to an infrastructure team. And this infrastructure team actually reviews the ticket request and actually propagates all this information to several other teams, right? It could be a network team who is trying to find a self IP address to allocate to the VM it could be the storage team uh, looking for storage solutions for, for the VM, uh, security team, software team, finance team even, et cetera. So, and, and after all of these teams have uh, you know, done their due diligence and pass on the required information, uh, the infra team reviews all of this and make sure that the request has been fulfilled. And then it uh, returns uh, the IP address for, for the developer to access. So, you no, know, as you can see, the processing time uh, can take very long from uh, ranging from days to weeks. So the challenges in this kind of workflow is that it's pretty manual, it's tedious, inefficient, and error prone. Um, it's hard to scale. Imagine if you have multiple tickets coming at one go, uh, you, can, you can actually identify lots of bottlenecks that can potentially happen, right? Which can cause huge operational overhead. And all this culminates to long processing time because uh, you have, you, you have, as you can see from the uh, picture earlier on, um, their loss of teams means loss of cross-functional communications, and this will uh, bring along a high processing time. So, you know, the, the, the quick solution to this is to uh, have an automated solution, right? So let's take a look at how automated solution works. So, you know, same, uh, developer request for dev VM, and then now instead of uh, funneling the, the request to uh, infrastructure team. Let's say we have a self-service portal which handles all these ticket requests. And this, this service portal actually is able to render the ticket information into what we call Terraform modules. You can think of Terraform modules as uh, reusable code, which are ready to be consumed. And once the render information gets passed into this uh, ready-made codes, and you know, as you can see, the middleman uh, processes is being replaced by uh, a set of codes. And then all of these requests can be uh, churned into Terraform and Terraform will provision the resources automatically. So as you can see, uh, the, the, uh, the, the result is the same, but now with a more fluid and uh, automated approach. And this will drastically cut down the processing time to, uh, from days to, to weeks down to minutes. Right, so this is what we call the IAC approach, infrastructure as a code approach, which means that you are able to codify and with codification, you are able to leverage on automation to achieve automated provisioning. And this will help you to achieve reliable and repeatable provisioning process. Um, you know, things are more easy to scale. You can imagine uh, lots of tickets coming at the same time, but um, you don't see any bottleneck. And all this uh, can, can drastically cut down the processing time. But um, you know, all, all this automation is good, but what if there are some, uh, some things that happen in the middle, right? For example, resources are not configured correctly. Let's say some, uh, the, the user uh, has, has typed in something that is wrong or a typo uh, in the self-service portal. Or if a uh, user just overloads the self-service portal and, and the cloud goes go out of control. What if you know, somebody who is irresponsible who is, who is trying to uh, you know, do, use the resources for, for his own uh, and in a bad way, like for example, he might be looking at Bitcoin mining uh, and then uh, he just raised requests uh, irresponsibly. And these requests are processed, right? Because everything is automated. What if the users want to make a change? And so on and so forth. So, you know, automation is good, but there is a need for a governance mechanism to be in place uh, for such a rapid and fluid kind of workflow. So now let's look at scenario three where you have an automated infrastructure workflow now with a little flavor of governance. So everything remains the same, right? So now um, I'm going to impose what is, uh, called, what is called a policy as a code in a similar vein 
as uh, what you have seen in the network storage security software uh, section where uh, everything is codified. And in this case, we are looking at codifying uh, reviews and checks, verifications, right, uh, as a code. And this is actually the concept behind Sentinel. And this is how you achieve governance with Sentinel. And with this important piece in place, Terraform actually is able to check against uh, these policies before doing uh, the resources or before provisioning the resources automatically, right? And this doesn't uh, drastically cause the uh, processing time to increase, right? And you are able to achieve the same outcome as, as per automated approach. So the concept behind Sentinel is that this is a policy as a code framework. It allows you to enforce governance in existing uh, software. You are able to write uh, conditionals Right, to, to make uh, the correct decision so that uh, the, the code can do all this decision making for you. It has its own language and uh, it's natively built uh, in HashiCorp Enterprise products. For today's example, we are using Terraform, but uh, no, Sentinel is available on Nomad, Console, and Vault Enterprise as well. And uh, governance policies are enforced automatically. And with that, um, you, know, you are able to uh, once you have, now you have the, the idea and the concept of Sentinel, now we'll uh, proceed to use Sentinel Playground, which is the, the topic of today, to, de to develop a Sentinel code with zero installation. Okay, so now let's go ahead to the demo. And this is where you, you, you are looking at, this is um, it's the Sentinel Playground. Right? Just hit on to play the Sentinel project.io. This is an environment where you can start uh, building your Sentinel code. So on the left, you will see that there, uh, there, there's, a, there's a window here. This is the place where you can start uh, coding. On the right, you can see that there's a window for mock plans, right? what we call mock plans. So I will tell you where to get these mock plans. So these are basically data that uh, you know, your developed code can, can be used to check against. And on the last bottom right here, you can see there's a small window which allows you to quickly check the results uh, to see whether the policy works. So first of all, let's go and get the mock policies. This can be uh, abstracted from Terraform Cloud or Terraform Enterprise itself. So you have a successful plan here. And then here you have, uh, you can see that there's a little download Sentinel mocks button, right, which allows you to uh, get the data that you want to test very, very quickly and easily. So I have a simple code here, which uh, allows me to provision a couple of things. I have uh, in the best instance, I have some uh, EIP and I have an S3 bucket, which is a, a quite a standard piece of code. And you now I'm going to go ahead and download the Sentinel box. And then I'm going to abstract uh, the, the Sentinel uh, mock file calling. So, uh, so in, in the mock plan, you will see a couple of files. Uh, I, will, I will copy over. What, uh, what is required. So in the mock plan, uh, you will see, uh, you, you have to actually look for this section called uh, the plan, plan-v2.sentinel. And then from there, you go to the resource changes section, copy it. Okay. And this is actually the place that you would uh, abstract file from All right okay so this there's this resource changes stanza so this is like a json output which shows uh, what is the plan results of of your terraform plan and then you're going to write some similar uh, code to check against uh, all this result All right so now once you have the mock uh, plan result ready you are ready to uh, write a policy so what we are going to do today is to write a simple policy to check whether my resource, uh, in my case, uh, EC2 instance, does it have a certain text and does it fulfill a certain uh, instance type? So first thing I need to do is to import. Right? So this is like, uh, imagine it to be like your uh, usual importation of libraries for uh, other development projects that you might have. This is uh, the similar concept. Right, so because I'm using TF plan, I'm going to import TF uh, plan. And now I'm going to basically gather all the AWS instances 
from from uh, from the file here, and then put it uh, into this variable called ec two instances. So basically, if you can see this, it does a little filtering, goes through the data here, and then check whether the action contains create or update, and then get uh, all the instances uh, it, to be stored in this uh, uh, variable. And then now I'm going to define a couple of mandatory tags. So these are tags that I'm going to check against. Uh, it can be anything. So let me just put a uh, name for now. And then I'm going to check against uh, certain instance types in uh, set a variable and then uh, it, it can be more than one value here right for now the tags are putting uh, as a single value but it can be a list and next this is the crucial part where you define the rules to uh, for for standard to check against so here i am defining a variable called mandatory instant tags and then i set a rule to basically say that all the EC2 instances that I've gathered here, they must consist uh, this mandatory text, which is the one that I defined here. And then I'm going to define an RCL rules, which actually does a similar thing, but this time to check that the instance type allowed is the one that I've defined here. All right, and then lastly, I'm gonna set the main rule, which I basically checks for the result for uh, the uh, these two rules I have defined here. Okay, so now I have uh, a simple signal code ready. Let me just quickly check and by clicking the run button, if it's passing, it will show that it's true. Means that both policy are both policy are passing. So you see, signal actually evaluates the first rule, uh, which is instance type and then mandatory text and then it gives you the output of the, the main rule which is this segment here so if you want to check whether it's, it's working correctly let's say okay let's look at the data here i have the name tag so it is working correctly my ec2 is t2 micro so it should pass so let me just define something that is failing so that it's, it's uh, actually to show that it's actually working Right, so let's say I, I type something for, for some text that doesn't exist. And let's quickly check whether it's working as intended. So immediately it tells you false right, because it's failing this because I do have the names tag, but I only have the name tag. Right, so it tells you straight away the main uh, rule failed with this uh, mandatory instance tag uh, rule being evaluated as false. So it's working as intended here, right? I need both rules to pass before I can get a, full, a fully passing result. So I'm going to put this in place by uh, putting it into my Terraform uh, uh, plan process. So here, uh, here you guys can see there's only a plan. There's no Sentinel check that's in place. So to put this Sentinel uh, code check in place on the Terraform workflow, I have to go to Terraform Cloud, go to policy sets, and that's where I can define certain policy check uh, for policy sets to contain policies to check your uh, Terraform plan. So here, uh, I have already pre-configured a Git that is uh, linked to my policy set. So I can quickly go to here, go to my files. <clears throat> here I have uh, I've defined a file call enforce ec2 text that size the sentinel so uh, let me just quickly paste in the code that i have earlier and there you have there you go and the other file here it's actually the sentinel.hcl file to actually define it's a place to define uh, what kind of enforcement level you want so in this case we are defining hard mandatory means that uh, if it fails it fails right there's the other option of soft mandatory means that if it fails somebody with a high authority is able to overwrite. And then there's a, lastly, there's this advisory level, which allows uh, you, it will basically flag off uh, if the Sentinel policy fails, right? But it doesn't do anything. It's just to give a, a alert uh, in the process. So these are three different enforcement levels. So in this example, I'm gonna show hard military. So once I have this uh, policy set ready, 
let me proceed to apply it to uh, the workspace that I have earlier on. In my case, it's Sentinel demo. I'm going to add the workspace, click update policy set, and then my policy should be enforced when I run this, uh, when, I, when I perform a Terraform plan in this workspace. So now I'm going to start a new plan. I'm going to click start plan. And then you have, you have noticed that there's another row called policy check happening here, which means that I've uh, successfully applied uh, the policy check process uh, in my Terraform run. So as per usual, Terraform plan happens, but now there's an added step of uh, the policy check that is ongoing. Right, so it's failing as expected because I've uh, defined something that uh, a tag that is, doesn't exist in my uh, plan. So, yep, so the, it shows that the mentally instance tags uh, rule is failing. So that's why the main uh, is giving a false result. Right, so this is basically the demo for uh, to, to implement Sentinel and how do you write a Sentinel code in Sentinel Playground. Okay, so um, there are certain resources that you can use, uh, some documentations here, uh, which, I will, which can be sent across uh, after the, uh, the snapshot itself. And that's all for, from me, and uh, back to you, Eric. All right, thanks for that, Raymond. Um, nice presentation and demo there. Uh, I see that there are some questions that have been posted onto the chat. Mm -hmm. I hope they are answered already. Uh, if you have any questions uh, at this point and hasn't been answered yet, and you would like to chat with either David or Raymond, uh, I encourage you to put it into the Q&A tab right now. You'll find that the Q&A button is right at the bottom of your screen. So click on that and punch in your questions and we'll get to them. Okay, I'm not seeing any questions yet, but if you do yeah. have any other questions that's after this event or after this webinar, and you would like to chat with Raymond, uh, you see Raymond's email address uh, on screen right now. You can drop him an email anytime and he will respond to you directly. Also would like to point you to this um, web page over here, learn.hashicorp.com. So if you like what you heard today and would like to find out more, you can always visit our learn pages on our website. Once again, that's learn.hashicorp.com. And this session has been recorded. We will send you the link to the recording in an email soon over the next one or two days. And right now, I don't see any more questions in the Q&A tab. And with that, that comes to the end of the webinar. Thanks again for joining us today. And a big thank you to Raymond and David as well. Enjoy the rest of your day. Bye for now. Thank you.